Case number two. The patient is a 75-year-old male who, because of persistent bloating and loose stools for several weeks, underwent abdominal imaging that revealed an incidental pancreatic mass. The patient was otherwise asymptomatic and, in particular, denied abdominal pain, weight loss, and jaundice. The past medical history is significant for several comorbidities, including obesity, diabetes, and recent hip replacement due to fracture. The outside hospital CT scan revealed a large mass of about 9 centimeters in the pancreatic head. The mass was irregular with thick enhancing components as well as septa and calcifications. The superior mesenteric vein appeared to drape over the mass and the body and tail of the gland were atrophic. A subsequent endoscopic ultrasound confirmed the presence of a complex solid and cystic lesion in the pancreatic head. There were several cystic spaces with thick walls, but no real cyst wall mass. A fine needle aspiration biopsy was performed during the procedure, aspirating fluid for biochemical analysis and targeting the thick cyst wall mass for cytology. The cyst fluid was spun down, creating a cytospin for cytological evaluation, and the supernatant was sent for CEA and amylase testing. The FNA of the cyst wall was processed as a cell block for cytological analysis. The CEA and amylase results came back showing both low CEA and amylase levels. The cytospin preparation of the cyst contents showed blood and scattered cells with classic endocrine morphology, that is uniform polygonal cell shape, round central nucleus, coarse stippled chromatin, and non-mucinous cytoplasm. These characteristic cytological features are even apparent on rare tumor cells. The formal and fixed paraffin embedded cell block provides morphological evidence that supports the neuroendocrine differentiation of the tumor. In addition, this tissue is, provides readily available tumor for ancillary testing. Immunohistochemical stains for endocrine differentiation confirm the nature of the cells as endocrine in type. Strong, diffuse cytoplasmic staining of the tumor cells with synaptophysin is sufficient to support the diagnosis of a neuroendocrine tumor. Chromogranin A is a more specific marker for neuroendocrine differentiation, but as illustrated here, staining is not as robust as with synaptophysin, and with small tissue samples, there is a risk of a false negative interpretation if this is the only stain used for confirmation of a neuroendocrine tumor. The patient underwent a Whipple procedure in March of 2011. The resected specimen demonstrated a well-circumscribed mass with both solid and cystic components. The solid component is predominant but in a circumferential nature around the cystic spaces which created the thick cyst wall appearance on endoscopic ultrasound. Central necrosis and cystification is a classic way that solid tumors become secondarily cystic. Histologically, the tumor cells form cords and nests, both in the solid component as well as outlining the cyst wall. Tumor cells have a similar morphological appearance on histology as they did on cytology and in the cell block. Again, uniform polygonal cell shape, round central nucleus, coarse stippled chromatin, and non-mucinous cytoplasm. This organoid nesting tumor growth pattern is characteristic of neuroendocrine tumors throughout the body. The central area of secondary cysts is filled with blood and degenerated cells with occasional viable tumor cells, which is why aspiration targeting the cyst wall is the best place to obtain viable tumors for diagnosis. Neuroendocrine tumors are divided into low-grade and high-grade categories. Low-grade is grade 1 and 2, and high-grade is grade 3. Grade is determined by the number of mitoses on routine H&E, as well as the proliferation marker showing uh, mitoses uh, with immunohistochemical stain. The hottest area of the tumor should be targeted for grading the tumor, which is why grading is not done on cytology since this is just sampling part of the tumor. 
Grade 1 tumors have less than 2 mitoses per high-powered field and a KI-67 index of less than 3%. Grade 2 tumors have 2 to 20 mitoses per high-powered field or a KI-67 index of between 3 and 20%. And grade 3 tumors or high-grade tumors have greater than 20 mitoses per high-powered field or a KI-67 index of greater than 20%. The vast majority of PEN-NETs or pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are low-grade or grade 1s to 2. And by convention, the term PEN-NET or pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor implies a low-grade tumor. A grade 3 tumor implies a carcinoma. In this particular case, this large tumor was mostly low grade with only focal areas of high KI-67 proliferation index and only a focal area of carcinoma. So in this case, the final diagnosis was therefore well differentiated pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor with foci of poorly differentiated pancreatic neuroendocrine carcinoma. Approximately 10% of neuroendocrine tumors of the pancreas are cystic in nature. Half are completely cystic, mimicking a primary mucinous cyst, and the other half are solid and cystic, mimicking other primary tumors of the pancreas. Most are non-functioning. If clinically suspected, however, serum chromogranin levels can be obtained uh, to support the clinical impression of a cystic neuroendocrine tumor, but keep in mind that this is only 70% sensitive. Adding serum pancreatic polypeptide to the chromogranin A serum levels can increase the sensitivity to 93%. A thick cyst wall is a clue to the diagnosis on imaging, but there is too much overlap with imaging features of other entities in the pancreas to be sufficiently independent uh, for diagnosis, therefore requiring a tissue diagnosis. In fact, a recent study from MGH showed that cytology is the diagnostic test for cystic neuroendocrine tumors of the pancreas. Cytology was specifically diagnostic in 71% of the cases in this study, whereas EUS features alone were only specifically um, diagnostic in 34% of the cases. Adding a suspicious cytology interpretation increased the accuracy to 77% for cytology compared to 38% for EUS features. And when you added high-grade cytology uh, morphological features to indicate a high-risk cyst requiring resection, the accuracy increased to 86% compared to 56% high-risk imaging features for EUS alone. And another study from MGH focusing on EUS features and cyst fluid analysis, it was shown that almost all cystic neuroendocrine tumors have a low CEA level, less than 6% in most cases, compared to a matched cohort of mucinous cysts where the typical CEA level is greater than 192 nanograms per mil. Although not emphasized in this study, amylase levels were also usually low. And compared to IPMNs, for example, amylase levels are usually always elevated. So in conclusion, 10% of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are cystic, and that should always be kept in mind when evaluating a cyst in the pancreas. A thick cyst wall is a clue to the diagnosis on imaging. Elevated serum chromogranin levels can be obtained to support the clinical impression of a cystic neuroendocrine tumor, but sensitivity is only 70%, and it's not 100% specific either. A thick cyst wall and or solid component should be targeted during biopsy to enhance the diagnostic yield for cyt cytological diagnosis. Cyst fluid analysis will almost always show low CEA and amylase levels. And finally, cytology is the most important test as it is the most accurate diagnostic test for cystic neuroendocrine tumors of the pancreas. Thank you.